Hell yeah, I can. I'm just messing around my iPad, so I'm going to do it digitally, but same rules apply if you're doing digital or traditional. I recommend using a reference. It definitely helps to take some of the guesswork out. You think you know what a face looks like in your head, and then when it comes time to drawing it, you're like, oh, have I ever seen a fucking face before? So references help with that. So something that I found incredibly useful when I was just kind of starting to learn how to draw faces was kind of tracing, but not really. You'll see what I mean. So I lowered the opacity on this face, and I'm just going to really roughly kind of map out the features of the face so that makes it easy but that's not always possible and some people get really fucking weird and judgy when artists admit to doing that so another way to do it is start with kind of a really scribbly sketch how i'll do it is i'll start with like a weird kind of oval egg shape like that obviously it's not the same shape as our model's head here but we start scribbling and then we refine it as we go so I start with a rough head shape. I'll map out like this, where I want the eyes to go. So it'd be, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm kind of doing this line, right? And then another one I'll do is down the center of the face. So just kind of like that. Pretty rough, but it's a start. Next thing I'll do, or sometimes I'll just skip these lines and I'll just go straight to doing kind of ovals where the eyes will go. We don't need it to look good. I start just kind of blocking in where her face is going to go. For the mouth, I'll either do another oval like that, or I'll just kind of put lines where the corners of the mouth are. It just helps me to start visualizing. When I'm using references, I don't want it to be an exact copy. I just kind of use this as a general guide. I like doing really kind of stylized faces. I over-exaggerate or under-exaggerate some features, so... This is how it works for me. But once I'm pretty okay with where these little features are, I think that I'm okay with this. The next thing I'll start doing is this part of her face. Again, I don't need it to be an exact copy. I just kind of use it as a rough guide. If the angles are really sharp, that's fine. I will refine it later. I always kind of struggle with this part because I hate it. If we're assuming her top, the top of her ear is where, like, the crease of her eye is, we'll keep it with this line. It's really hard to do this holding a phone. At this point, I always kind of extend the head a little bit, too, because it looks really funny and it bothers me. So, good enough. As you can see, not an exact copy of her head. Like I said, I draw the features a lot bigger, the head a lot smaller than naturally occurring. But... That's how I like it. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is uh, erasing and refining. I'll start kind of erasing lines I know I don't need. I'm going to keep some of them visible just for the sake of this tutorial here. But, you know, I don't need all these scribblies, so we'll get rid of it. Usually at this point, these lines can go. If you're doing this traditionally, I really like kneaded erasers for this. Just kind of pat it over the sketch and it lightly erases it. And if you are digital, I like adding a new layer and lowering the sketch layer down in opacity, like that. So now on our new layer, we can start making it look like a face. So I tend to start with the eyes next. And again, we're just keeping it really sketchy. We're erasing shit that we know we don't need. The part that I like to do next in three quarter face views is the nose because it, this part kind of always messes me up. So I like to just get this part in or else I tend to put the nose in a really weird spot, kind of like that. The sketch does not need to be perfect, and I find the scribblier it is, the easier it is to kind of help visualize and see the face come together, if that makes sense. Next we're going to do the lips. I always like to draw the, uh, not Cupid's bow, I believe it's like the philtrum area. It just kind of helps me map where the top of the lips are going to go here. That works for me. Her nose ends here. So we're going to do the same thing. Usually at this point, I get rid of the reference and I just will start refining this kind of however I see fits. So I'm just going to keep sketching. I'm probably going to uh, switch to a time lapse now just so you can see how I continue to refine this. And 
here she is. I hope that helped. If you have any other questions, let me know. But that's uh, that's how I draw faces. Oh, God. And here's my dog. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.